Good morning, friends. It is time to harvest my corn. The corn that I have been growing here has been planted for just about 90 days. I put little transplants into the ground here on July 1st of 2022. It is now September 28th and it's been just under 90 days and it is ready to harvest. But before harvesting, let me tell you a little bit of the challenges that I found when I was growing this flint corn here in Northern Virginia. The very first thing that I noticed is that the corn was growing a little bit differently. So the one here in this side was growing very tall and the one in the back was a little shorter. So that means that the one corn in the front was casting a shade to the one in the back. So it actually got gradually shorter as it got farther along on the west side. This is another perfect example of what happened when I was growing my corn. There is a lot of wind and my corn was a little too floppy. So I had to tie it down with a string. I put four stakes on all the sides and then I ran a string all the way around the corn to kind of keep it from falling over. Up up here you can see bags and strings and other things that I attached to the tassels of the corn because the birds were eating all of the tassels that produced the pollen for this corn. So I, I didn't find a good way to keep them off so my corn actually is not fully pollinated. I, I was planning to collect pollen from those tassels and then hand pollinate all the ears of corn but since there was no tassels left because of the birds it was tough to do. So I still managed to hand pollinate a few of those ears of corn and we do have some success. I've already harvested one from each little patch. The corn at the very front here grew to 11 foot tall. The one in the back only to about nine foot tall. So that's so interesting. There are also different varieties. So that could also be the fact that they're a little shorter, but you can all actually notice the little decline on the corn itself. It is weird phenomena that you observe when you do some gardening in your own home. Despite all the challenges, I was able to get some ears of corn here to mature and now they're ready to be picked. And I have seen the squirrels back there eating them away. So I have to take them today. Otherwise there will be nothing left for me. This corn is so tall. This one right here, I am, I am 5'8". And this one is up, probably up six feet. So let me collect that one. That one looks pretty good. Here is, I believe this is Red Butcher, so we'll see what comes out of here real quick. This one's probably one of the best looking ears of corn here, so this one should be pretty beautiful. Oh yeah, check this out. This is called Bloody Butcher or Red Butcher, and this is flint corn, so I'll be able to make tortillas with this, and the tortillas will be red. I'm also hoping to make tamales, and those are going to be beautiful as well. There was definitely a little bit of cross pollination because this one is purple and we're growing a blue purple corn in the very back. So that's what happens when you grow corn together, but that's okay. This one looks so beautiful. This is what I was telling you. The squirrels have started to eat the corn and they are eating it away. So I cannot have that. So I have to harvest this now. Otherwise there will be no corn left for me. But check out how beautiful this is. But they already ate all this side. I hate the squirrels. They're so, such a menace in this garden. In order to cure my corn, I will be peeling all the husks and leaving them like this. Then I will put all the husks together like this and hang them in my garage to dry for about three weeks so that they can get really dry and then we can start cooking with it. This corn is so tall, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna harvest one from here and see what color we get out of this patch. Each little bed is a different color. Ah, uh, yeah, this one is the white hickory king. Uh-oh, we got pest issues, we got source, all sorts of issues going on here. But it's good that we're harvesting now. So you can see something is eating this and then it's rotted a little bit. But this is hickory king. All of the other cardinals are perfectly good to eat. So as long as we can get this to dry pretty quickly, we should be able to use the rest of the kernels. I gotta say, Hickory King is a bit small. So 
Ah, I know what the issue is here. We have a little grub that is eating the corn. You can see the little grub right here and it's eating the corn. So we got to harvest this ASAP. And check this out. This one cross pollinated with the purple one too. So you have a little purple kernel in between the white one. Hey, that's gonna be cool. I'm, I'm planning to mix all of these together anyway. So it doesn't really matter what, cor what color they are. <laughs> that's so cool. And last but not least, we have the blue carnage, I believe it's called. And this one, it left me wishing for more. The corn itself was a little spindly. The plants themselves were a little too thin and they flopped over quite a bit. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to collect out of here, but we're still gonna harvest it. This is probably one of the biggest, biggest ones in here. So I'm gonna take this one to show you guys. Look at this beautiful corn. This is a blue carnage. I believe that's what it was called. The package itself, the letters on the on the name were not very clear. So I, I'm I am calling it blue carnage. <laughs> or clarence, I think it is. Blue carnage. Yeah, the, ah, it smells so good. It is time to harvest all of the corn. So I'll leave you on time lapse so you can see how I do it. This is how much I got from the red corn. This is the bloody butcher. Beautiful stuff. This is what I got from the white hickory king. And this is how much I got from the blue corn. Not a whole lot. I say the blue corn is kind of a disappointment, but it was also growing in the bed that didn't get the, the most sun. So next year I know I will not be growing my corn here, uh, but I'll be growing it along the fence kind of back there where you can see there's still a lot of sun, even though it is early autumn. Overall, I had fun growing this corn here. It was a little weird because it was late in the season. I got the seeds really late in the season and supposedly you're supposed to have your corn knee high by 4th of July. And I was just planting it on July 1st. So next year, I'll save some of the seeds from this corn and then I'll try to plant it again next season. I'll try to do a bigger plot of corn next year because I really enjoy corn and I really hope to be able to make it a staple crop in my diet. So I'll be trying to grow a bigger patch next year. If anything, just look at the colors on these things. They are just so beautiful and pretty to look at. These are so wonderful and I'll continue to grow these varieties because they are so pretty and I hope it tastes just as good. I will be making a video on how to make tortillas from scratch. So I hope that you guys subscribe to the channel and are following the channel so you can see that video. It's coming up in like three weeks because we have to let these dry for a little while. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you guys in the next one.